Hi and welcome to John's Maths Book. In this video, we'll be exploring another key concept in mathematics. If you find this tutorial helpful, then please show your support by subscribing, liking and leaving a comment. Your positive engagement helps me create more content and allows me to bring you more valuable maths lessons. Without further ado, let's go over to the whiteboard. In this exercise, we have a circle which is cut by a horizontal line creating a segment shown here in red. We are tasked with finding the area of the segment shown in red using double integrals and polar coordinates. We could use the equation to find the area of a circle sector and subtract a portion of the blue region to do this, but we'll use this to verify our solution. The equations of the horizontal line and circle are shown in Cartesian coordinates. The equation of the circle is x squared plus y squared equals 4, and the equation of the horizontal line is y equals 1. The circle has a radius of 2 and is centered at the origin, and the horizontal line cuts the y-axis at y equals 1. The first step to finding the area is to convert the equations of the circle and the horizontal line from Cartesian coordinates to polar coordinates. To do this, we'll substitute r cos theta for x and r sine theta for y. And so beginning with the circle, in Cartesian form we have x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. And making the substitution for x and y gives r squared into the bracket of cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 4. Using the trig identity where cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1, we're left with r squared is equal to 4. And taking the positive square root of both sides of this equation leaves r is equal to 2. And for the horizontal line where y is equal to 1, if we make the substitution for y, we have r sine theta is equal to 1. And therefore, r is equal to 1 divided by sine theta. Now that we've found the radial distance r for the circle and horizontal line, let's look at the behavior of r as we use it to compute the region shown in red. As r rotates in a counterclockwise direction between at this stage unknown angles of theta, where theta is the angle r makes for the x-axis, the radial distance covering the area shown in red is determined by both the horizontal line and the circle. The radial distance begins when the horizontal line intersects with the circle for the first time at some unknown angle of theta and ends where it meets the circle. This process continues until it reaches another unknown angle of theta. To find the angles of theta where the circle intersects with the horizontal line, we can equate the polar equation of the circle and the horizontal line. The two polar equations are r equals 2 for the circle and r equals 1 divided by sine theta for the horizontal line. Equating the two gives 2 equals 1 divided by sine theta and therefore sine theta is equal to a half. And so the first angle of theta where the horizontal line and the circle intersect is at theta equals pi by 6 radians. And as r rotates counterclockwise about theta, the next time sine theta is equal to a half occurs where theta is equal to 5 pi by 6 radians. And this is where the horizontal line intersects with the circle for the second time. As this is a symmetrical shape, we could just consider the area from theta equals pi by 6 to theta equals pi by 2 and double it to get the total area. However, for this exercise, I'm going to consider the total area. So that's where theta equals pi by 6 to where theta equals 5 pi by 6. Have a go at the first option. So that's where theta rotates from pi by 6 to pi by 2. And let me know in the comments section what answer you get. We are now in a position to start defining the limits of integration as r rotates about theta, which will be the outer of the two integrals. The area of a region, so capital R, can be defined as a double integral over the region R, where we sum infinitesimally small pieces of area shown as dA. In this case, the region, as we saw, is a single sector represented by a double integral. The sector began where theta equals pi by 6, 
which is where the horizontal line first intersected with the circle and then continued to where the horizontal line intersected with the circle for the second time and that was at theta equals 5 pi by 6. Now let's look at what happens when we sum infinitesimally small pieces of r along the radial distance or in the r direction. This will help us define the inner integral. When we integrate in the r direction, this will represent the inner of the integrals. The diagram represents a sector of the region capital R. The angle it makes is infinitesimally small and is denoted by d theta. Within the sector, we have infinitesimally small pieces of area denoted by dA. The size of each area is the length multiplied by the width. So in this case, dr is the length and r d theta the width. And so dA is equal to r dr d theta. To find the total area of the sector, we integrate or sum in the r direction. When we sum or integrate along the radial distance r, we begin at the horizontal line, so where r is equal to 1 divided by sine theta, and continue until we reach the perimeter of the circle, so where r is equal to 2. Now we can add the limits of integration when we integrate or sum along the radial distance r. We saw that our lower limit was at r equals 1 divided by sine theta, which represents the horizontal line, and our upper limit was where r met the perimeter of the circle, so that's where r is equal to 2. And we saw that we are summing infinitesimally small pieces of area, dA, which translates to r dr d theta. We can now start evaluating the inner integral. So we're integrating between r equals 1 divided by sine theta to r equals 2, r dr. Using the power rule, the antiderivative of this is r squared divided by 2, and we need to evaluate this between 1 divided by sine theta and 2. And if we plug in these values for r, we get 2 minus 1 divided by 2 multiplied by sine squared theta. Now we can start working on the outer integrals. Note now we have two outer integrals. The first from theta equals pi by 6 to theta equals 5 pi by 6 of 2d theta minus the integral from theta equals pi by 6 to theta equals 5 pi by 6 of 1 divided by 2 sine squared theta d theta. So starting with the first of these, we're integrating from theta equals pi by 6 to theta equals 5 pi by 6 of 2 d theta. Using the power rule, the antiderivative of this is 2 theta, and we need to evaluate it between pi by 6 and 5 pi by 6. And plugging in these values for theta, we have 10 pi by 6 minus 2 pi by 6, which equals 4 pi by 3. And for the second of the two outer integrals, we need to integrate between theta equals pi by 6 to theta equals 5 pi by 6 of 1 divided by 2 sine squared theta d theta. And the antiderivative of this is minus 1 divided by 2 multiplied by tan theta, which we need to evaluate between pi by 6 and 5 pi by 6. Please see this video for a step-by-step -step guide on how to evaluate the integral of 1 over sine squared theta d theta. If we now plug in the upper and lower limits of theta, this evaluates to the square root of 3. We now have a final answer for the area shown in red, which equates to 4 pi divided by 3 minus the square root of 3. Now let's move on to verifying this solution. We can do this by finding the area of the sector of the circle that I've just marked. We can then subtract from it the area of this triangle marked here and this tri triangle marked here, which will leave the area of the segment in red. The area of the sector is a fraction of the area of the circle. The fraction is defined by the angle of the sector, which in this case is 5 pi by 6 minus pi by 6 divided by 2 pi, which is then multiplied by the area of the circle. So the area of the circle is pi r squared, so we have pi multiplied by the radius squared, which is 2 squared. This all evaluates to 4 pi divided by 3. Now the area of one of these triangles marked here is half multiplied by the base multiplied by the height. 
and the triangle marked is a 90 degree triangle and its dimensions are two for the hypotenuse as that's the radius of the circle and one for one of the sides as that's where it cuts the y-axis and by Pythagoras' theorem the other side is the square root of three. So to find the area of one of these triangles we have a half multiplied by square root of three multiplied by one which is the square root of three over two and as we've got two triangles of the same dimensions we multiply by two. So this gives us the square root of three and we then subtract this area from the total area of the sector. So we're left with 4 pi by 3 minus the square root of 3.